Majesty. I've heard from the servants that you couldn't sleep. And I assume it's because you knew that we would be coming home tonight. I hope you didn't miss me and your father too much. And Eliza and the other servants. Well, at least you had your brother to keep you company. That must have been wonderful. You are probably curious. What did I learn about the Prince of Rotterdam? What is Prince Magnus like? Are you still awake enough to hear about it? All right, all right. Your father has already gone to bed. I saw him enter his chambers on my way up here. But I'm sure he's going to talk to you about all of this tomorrow anyway. I can tell you about my perspective. <laughs> but first, the other servants told me that you haven't been sleeping well ever since we left. So how about I give you a head massage that always helps you sleep? I knew you. Your father is probably going to tell you everything about your future husband tomorrow. Yes, I said that on purpose. Not potential future husband anymore. I have a good feeling about him. I think he might be the one for you. And you know, I'm very picky when it comes to whoever it is you're going to marry, and I do not take your future lightly. You left quite a good impression on all of us. Well, when we first went there, we didn't even know what he looked like. And specifically, Eliza and I, we had them. Um, an interesting first, well, it's, it wasn't an encounter, but, well, when we first arrived at the court, it was the early morning, and we were shown to our rooms, where me and Eliza and all the other servants would stay during our visit. And we had this cozy little room um, on the ground floor. That's where all of us servants were. And Eliza and I put our backs in the room. And then we saw someone. We looked outside the window and we saw a man running across the grounds towards a, a wooden column. We were confused. He just it was he was the only person there. It was rather empty because most people were busy because of us guests. And the man looked like a noble, but we assumed he might have been an earl or a viscount. And he reached, he stretched his arms and reached for something up that column. And we realized there was a cat, a tiny little kitten. And he reached for it and he took it and it fought him the whole time. It scratched him quite a lot. He held it away from his body as far as possible. But, oh, that was... <laughs> swearing the whole time, but he was so gentle with the little thing. And then he put it 
on some hay that was on the floor. And then there was another cat. We assumed it must have been the mother of the kitten, because it walked up to that little kitten, slapped it, grabbed it by the neck, and carried it away. And Eliza and I, we stood in our room that we had just come into, and just looked at each other. <laughs> and then looked back outside to see that man just standing there, just with his arms on his waist, just going... <sighs> it was so strange. <laughs> and Eliza and I, we just laughed. The man didn't see us, he just went back after that. But judging by how he immediately knew where to go and knew what to do, and the mother cat also seemed to have recognized him, this is this was probably not the first time that had happened. <laughs> and we still assumed it was just some noble friend of the family. And it was only an hour later, when the official breakfast began, when Eliza and I were waiting in the room, in the dining room. And then your father came in. Next to him was the prince. And that man was the same man picked up that little cat. That moment when we realized that was the prince, Eliza and I stood you know, on opposite sides of the room. We could see each other. And we had to try so hard not to laugh. As you can imagine, you know us. We laugh a lot. And I could just see in her eyes, I could see the words no way. <laughs> oh, it was great. <laughs> that was a wonderful first impression. <laughs> well, it was um, rather unique to meet a prince that way, or to see him like that for the first time, but I, I think you can tell a lot about someone. The way they interact with animals. And that was, that was a good sign. Because there was no one else around to witness that. And the prince didn't see us, so... I assume it was a very genuine moment of just... simple kindness. I don't know what exactly your father and Prince Magnus were talking about, except for the possible marriage between you two, of course, but they seem to get along very, very well. Your father and the prince, they were joking around quite a bit. I have never seen a political meeting turn so casual. It made everyone else feel so at ease. Especially, you know, the servants from your father's side. Me and Eliza as well, we were so worried that we could make a mistake and offend the people of Rotterdam accidentally. But their servants assured us very quickly that that royal family is very kind and forgiving. We felt very, very welcome. I know you were nervous about this, but... You know, it is still your choice. some of the servants about Prince Magnus, and they all said that he is very, very kind to them, 
to everyone. But he he's always a bit distant. Apparently there was something or someone in his past who betrayed his trust. I don't know who exactly they were. Well, they weren't really talking about it. Someone just mentioned it casually and everyone else told him to shh. So, something must have happened, but I'm not sure what exactly. But perhaps someone could find out. I'm just so glad that your father let me come along. Of course it would have been better if you could have gone yourself, but this way at least I got to find out a few things. And well, if only there weren't so many rules could have come along too. But it's not proper for a princess to meet a potential future husband before the father does. <laughs> you know, your father thinks it's ridiculous as well, but he wanted to be careful. He didn't want to ruin your reconstruct your pillow and your blanket. You have turned both into just a flat piece of fabric. Alright. I'm so excited to find out what your father is going to tell you tomorrow. He loves you very much, you know? <laughs> you should have heard how he spoke of you at the court of Rotterdam. He is so proud of you. And he was bragging quite a lot about you. <laughs> So curious to find out how you like Prince Magnus. I have to tell you something. I wasn't supposed to say anything about that, but it was quite obvious that he has already fallen quite a bit for you. <laughs> you should have seen his reaction to seeing your portrait. I don't think he realized how easy it was to read his face in that moment. But I have never seen someone's eyes soften so much. It was like, like he saw the future of you two in the blink of an eye. <laughs> Believe me, it was it was like out of a book. It was so... <laughs> I think that was the moment your father realized, too, that he's a good man, that prince. <laughs> I'm being honest. His... He smiled ever so slightly. And... and the way he looked at your portrait, it was as if he completely forgot where he was. All he seemed to see in that moment was that face of yours. 
on that canvas. is that honest about his feelings I think everything will be okay even if you decide that he's not the one for you one more thing that I wanted to ask you. You see, the prince has this, um, this friend um, who happens to be at his court for a few more months. And I, well, this friend happens to be just as interested in crossbows as I am. So I was curious if you would allow me to um, take that legendary crossbow on your wall and show it to him just to talk about it all right it, it would also be good for potential future trade agreements mm -hmm. I mean we are well known for the good quality of our crossbows, so it could only benefit us if we show that to more people, right? <laughs> Thank you. much more comfortable. Alright then, you should rest now. And so should I. It's been a long journey. And I will see you tomorrow. Alright? Good night then, your majesty. I hope you have wonderful dreams.